Well, welcome to this talk. Now we're going to be looking at a case today of damage to the brain and damage to the myocardium after COVID-19 vaccination. But the question is, is this damage to the brain and heart caused by the, uh, the vaccine or is it caused by the natural infection? Well, we actually found out or the researchers in this study found out that the damage in the brain and the heart was caused by the vaccine, not the infection, because they only found the spike protein in the brain and in the heart. The spike protein had actually been produced, they believe, we believe, by the cells in the brain and the heart as the RNA circulated around the brain and the heart. These cells produce the spike protein and that caused the inflammatory reaction that caused the damage. If it had been natural infection, there would have been spike protein and a nucleocapsid protein. And actually the nucleocapsid protein is the most abundant protein produced by the virus, so there would have been loads of it. So we can say definitively that this damage was caused by vaccine not by the uh, natural infection. Let's have a look at the proof for that now. So here we see the SARS coronavirus 2 virus that we're familiar with, the spike protein here, of course. Now, the spike protein can occur on the virus itself, or the spike protein is also generated by the vaccine. But the nucleocapsid protein is inside, it's associated with the RNA, the actual ribonucleic acid of the of the virus and the uh, nucleocapsid protein is only found in the virus it's never generated by a vaccine so if you see spike protein on its own that means it's vaccine if you see spike protein and nucleocapsid protein it means it's natural viral infection that's the difference between the two now in this first slide we're looking at the uh, the frontal part of the brain and we can see patches of uh, degeneration and uh, inflammation. On this next picture, we can actually see acute brain damage as well. Uh, whenever there's a one, that's a death of a nerve cell, neuronal death. And two is microglial infiltration. These are the defense cells in the brain. And three are lymphocytes, which are associated with viral infection. And of course, all of these are pathological findings. None of them should be there. Now, going on to the heart, this is a myocarditis that we're seeing here. And we won't look at everything, but the fives, where there's five, that's cardiomyocyte. That's the myocardial cells that have degenerated in those areas. And the other numbers represent other pathological findings, things that should simply not be there. Now, this one here is a zonal activation, activation of microglial cells. So here we see these microglial defense. These are macrophage type cells in the brain in this affected zone here. And I think we can see the clear border between the two, between the, uh, the infected zone or the affected zone with the inflammatory response and the clear zone without the inflammatory response. Now, this is in the frontal brain as well. Now, these brown bits here, when you see the brown bits... These brown bits are uh, spike protein. So we see spike protein in the front part of the brain. And uh, we see it there again. Uh, this is in a different part of the brain. This is in one of the nuclei of the brain. And the brown is the spike protein. And this is also inflamed. So it's clear that there is spike protein here in the brain. But using exactly the same technique, this is in the frontal lobe of the brain. It's negative for nucleocapsid protein, so there's no brown bits there because there's no nucleocapsid protein present. And it's the same in the heart. The brown bits there, uh, they're the, nucle the, the brown bits there are the spike protein uh, that, of course, shouldn't be there. Was this caused by natural infection? Well, no, because when we look at the heart under this, uh, uh, the using the same technique, it's negative uh, immunohistochemical reaction for a nucleocapsid protein. This is actually one of the capillaries or small blood vessels in the heart, and we can see the, the blood vessels in there. But the point is there's no nucleocapsid protein. So we're not seeing nucleocapsid protein. We are seeing spike protein. Indicates that this can only be caused by the vaccine which generates the spike protein, not the natural infection, which would generate the spike protein and the 
nucleocapsid protein. Well, I think you'll agree that's pretty convincing that this pathology was caused by the, uh, the vaccines and not the natural infection. And you can clearly see the pathology yourself. It's on pictures. You can't say, well, it's not there. It simply is. Now, this is from this paper here, carried out in Germany, post-mortem work carried out in Germany. Now, why aren't autopsies being done in the United States? Why aren't they being done in, uh, in the UK on these uh, unfortunate patients that die in these circumstances? Why is the Germans the only one that seem to be doing this? I think legitimate questions to be asked and answered there. Moving on to the paper itself, let's look at it. So it's a case report, multifocal, so it occurred in many different parts of the brain. Necrotizing means it kills the tissue, so there was dead tissue. Encephalitis, inflammation of the brain, and uh, it affected the myocardium as well. Published in the peer-reviewed journal of vaccines. 76-year-old man, history of Parkinson's disease, died three weeks after the third COVID vaccination. Uh, May 2021 was the Oxford vaccine. July 2021 was the Pfizer vaccine. And December 2021 was the Pfizer vaccine. And it was the family that actually requested this due to the ambiguous circumstances of his uh, death. So quite sobering to think, really, that if the family hadn't requested this, it would not have been known. Although pathologists in other parts of Germany are conducting post-mortem studies at the moment, again, to differentiate between pathology caused by natural infection and pathology caused by uh, COVID vaccination. Now, at the post-mortem, the Parkinson's disease was confirmed. It's quite easy to tell that for pathologists looking at the brain. And there were signs of aspiration, pneumonia and systemic uh, arteriosclerosis. Now, this is hardening of the arteries that had probably developed over a long time. But the aspiration pneumonia is where you develop pneumonia after inhaling things like saliva or vomit. So it looks like what happened here was the vaccine caused the brain damage. The brain damage caused the fitting. The fitting caused the patient to go unconscious and breathe in some of his vomit and that was the cause of, of death, according to the, the clinical reports. And whenever you get damage to the brain, you can get fitting. It's a well-recognised uh, complication of, of fitting. So the histopathological analysis of the brain, acute vasculitis, that's uh, inflammation of the blood vessels in the brain. And this actually makes perfect sense because uh, the vaccine that's absorbed systemically it doesn't uh, come into direct contact with the tissues because the blood doesn't come into direct contact with the tissues, at least not initially. Uh, but it, uh, the vaccine circulating around the body will come into contact with the blood vessels. So the lipid uh, nanoparticles containing the RNA will go into the blood vessels and it's the blood vessel cells themselves that will express the spike protein. It's supposed to be expressed by the muscles in the arm, of course, but here it's being expressed by blood vessels in the brain and the myocardium. And then, of course, once the antigen is there, once the spike protein is there, we're going to get the associated inflammatory uh, reaction to that. And this, the lymphocytes are the type of white blood cells that typically combat viral infection. So multifocal necrotizing encephalitis, dead parts of the brain, different parts of the brain, uh, pronounced inflammation from glial and lymphocytic cells. So again, these are the defense cells in the brain trying to combat the presence of the antigen. In the heart, there were signs of chronic cardiomyopathy, which may well have been there before, but mild, acute uh, lymphohistotic myocarditis and vasculitis. And acute in the medical context means of recent onset. A patient had no history of COVID-19, he, had not, he did not have COVID-19. An immunohistochemistry for SARS coronavirus 2 antigen was conducted for spike protein and for nucleocapsid protein. They were looking for both proteins. But of course, they only found the spike protein. They did not find the nucleocapsid protein. So checking for the nucleocasmid plasmid protein 
checking for the uh, the spike protein both were looked for as we saw in those uh, photographs only spike but no nucleocapsid protein could be detected within the foci of inflammation brain and heart so only spike protein meaning it was produced by the vaccine not natural infection spike protein detected in the endothelial cells of the small blood vessels primarily now some quotes from the paper are really quite um well, quite strongly worded, really. Uh, since no nucleocapsid protein could be detected, the presence of spike protein must be ascribed to vaccination rather than to viral infection. Must be ascribed. The findings corroborate previous reports of encephalitis and myocarditis caused by gene-based COVID-19 vaccines. And of course, this is completely true. We've looked at previous post-mortem studies from Germany that show this sort of a pathology in the heart and this is also showing as it's in the brain another quote here from the paper a causal connection of these findings to the preceding COVID-19 vaccination was established by immunohistochemical demonstration of sars coronavirus 2 protein so a causal connection of these findings was established they're being quite definitive here now uh, for scientists to talk in such absolute terms is unusual, so they only do this when they're really pretty sure. Uh, the methodology introduced by this study should be uh, useful for distinguishing between causation by COVID vaccine and infection in ambiguous cases. Of course, that's not being done pretty well and not being done anywhere I know of. Clinicians should take note of such case reports for the sake of early detection and management of such adverse events among their patients. Again, simply not being uh, done. A thorough post-mortem examination of death in connection with COVID-19 vaccines should be considered in ambiguous circumstances, including the histology. Then we would know. At the moment, we don't know because the examinations are simply not being carried out. Clinical history of this patient. So as we said, the first vaccine was the Oxford, va Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, May 2021. Did experience profound cardiovascular side effects after that. So that could well have been the heart problem there. Uh, the brain problem seems to have developed after the second Pfizer vaccine. Family noticed obvious behavioural and psychological changes, didn't want to be touched, anxiety, lethargy, social withdrawal, even didn't want the family around. And of course, brain injury can give rise to very many different clinical manifestations, depending on the part of the brain uh, that is uh, involved in a particular case. Also, the Parkinson's disease got noticeably worse. Uh, second week after the third vaccine, suddenly collapsed, collapsed two weeks again, two weeks later, died shortly thereafter. Clinical diagnosis with death due to aspiration pneumonia. But as we find from the post-mortem, that aspiration pneumonia was probably caused by fitting. He, he, he'd bitten his tongue quite badly. Uh, so the brain damage caused the fitting and it was the fitting and the unconsciousness that caused the aspiration and pneumonia. So I'm afraid that's definitive evidence of uh, spike protein presence in the heart and in the brain. Um, perhaps um, regulators would want to watch this video, read this paper and uh, take that into uh, cognizance uh, as they go forward with their policies. I doubt it. But uh, I would suggest it. Thank you for watching.